I was invited to Sri Lanka by Christian Aid to make a set of photographs for an exhibition to mark the one year anniversary of the tsunami that devastated South Asia. It was a great opportunity to continue making work that I started making just two weeks after the, the, the tsunami. I was at home on the 26th of December with my family and like many other people was switched on the TV and these reports started to come in about the terrible disaster that had happened in South Asia. Ten days, two weeks later, I found myself actually in Bandache. I'd been asked to go there to make a, a video and some um, photographs. The destruction and the loss of life that happened in that particular place was absolutely incredible. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. The amount of immediate death and the amount of immediate destruction that happened was on a massive scale. That time that I spent there will be is seared on my memory. When I was asked to come to, to Sri Lanka, you know, I've come with that baggage, I've come with those, those images in my mind. And what I'm trying here to do is to create a continuum of that work that develops somewhat, doesn't stay with just, you know, images of destruction, but moves onwards, moves the story onwards and see how people, you know, are trying to pick back up the pieces. There's a whole load of people from a village who died in the tsunami, buried there on the top of this sort of windswept hill. Photographing there, you know, where the light, when the light was at the best time, of course afforded very dramatic images. A lot of it's just due with light. I mean, it's incredible the different types of light that can afford a sort of intensity of experience. நான் எங்களுடைய மக்கள் கடந்த பல ஆண்டுகளாக போரினாலும் சுனாமி போன்ற இயற்கை அனுத்தங்களாலும் பாதிக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறார்கள் இந்த பாதிப்புகளால் அவர்கள் மன ரீதியாக மிகுந்த தாக்கத்துக்கு உட்பட்டிருக்கிறார்கள் அந்த தாக்கத்திலிருந்து அவர்களை மீட்பதற்கு இவ்வாறான மகள் வலிப்பு செயல் திட்டங்கள் அவசியமாகிறது
தங்கள் இவ்வாறான செயல் திட்டங்களை ஏன் செய்கிறோம் என்றால் மக்கள் மகிழ்வாக இருப்பதற்கும் தங்களுடைய மனதை விடுவித்துக் கொள்வதற்கும் விடுவித்த மனநிலையில் இருந்து கொண்டு தங்களுடைய எதிர்காலம் பற்றி சிந்திப்பதற்கான ஒரு சூழ்நிலையை ஏற்படுத்துவதற்கும் You can see a, a local theatre group who work with children as a basis of trauma treatment. It was a chance to really talk to and get to know some of the children of the in the communities that were devastated by the tsunami. ரோட்டில் வேறு தண்ணி தூக்கி மரங்களோட மூதப்பட்டு வீட்டு கட்டுறவங்களோட மூதப்பட்டு இந்த இலைகள நீங்கள் தண்ணி கால உழும்ப உழும்பிட அப்படின் அந்த இலை வீங்க முடியல அப்புறம் ஒரு அண்ணா குஸ்பில் கொண்டு சேர்த்து ஒரு இளமை ரெண்டு இளமை இலை வீட்டுக்கு வந்துட்டேன் வீட்டை அம்மா அம்மம்மா தவிர அந்த அம்மா வீடு மீறாவிலேருந்து இறந்துட்டேன் அம்மம்மா நடக்க மாட்டா கண் தெரியாத நல்ல தண்ணிக்குள்ளே முட்டை வச்சு உடந்துட்டான் முதல் இருந்ததை விட இப்போ கஷ்டந்தான் ஏண்டா இந்த சுனாமி பாதிக்கப்பட்டு அம்மா அழந்தபடிய நீங்கள் கஷ்டந்தான் வேறு ஒரு வேறு ஒரு கஷ்டம் தீஸ் சில்ட்ரன் ஹவ் பின் த்ரூ நோட் ஜஸ்ட் த சுனாமி ஐ மீன் இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் வார் You know, often we see scenes of disaster and, and it's almost like we forget that the people imaged are individuals with individual stories and lives and I felt that the portraits, making portraits was very important to bring that fact home that this person was from this family and lost these members of their family and under these circumstances and they're an individual and that for me is, is a really important aspect of work. It's quite intense face. தம்பியாக்கள் செத்த அதில் செத்தது கவலையில் என்ன விட்டு போக இல்லை அதில் முடியலாம் அழுகிறது அந்த கவலையை வச்சு அப்பாவும் அந்த கவலையில் வச்சு அழுகிட்டு சில போக மாட்டேன் அந்த கவலையில் அங்கேயே இருந்துடுவேன் விளையாட்டுகள் சந்தோஷம் பையலோடு சேர்ந்து விளையாடுறது இல்லை எனக்கு சந்தோஷத்தில் அக்கா மேரோடு விளையாடுறது எனக்கு சந்தோஷத்தில் நான் Huh? Come and have a look. Come, I'll show him. Come and see. Okay. Okay, you come, come and show, I'll show you. You can have a look in and you see what it's like. Do you see? As a photographer, you need to develop a practice, you know, a way of working that, that, that suits your personality, but also allows you to bring out the sort of subject matter that you think is important. Um, I think essentially everybody loves Every loves the photography, everybody's really curious about it, and yet ultimately everybody feels uncomfortable in front of a camera. Okay, so it's like that. Yeah. It gives me your numbers. It gives me numbers that I put into the camera. I'm going to sit there and you can see what I look like, yeah? But I think if you just approach it like, you know, there isn't a problem. If you approach people like you explain to them what you're doing, that's why in my work I'm quite, there's quite a lot of interactivity. Can you see me? It's nice, huh? Okay, so now we're going to swap and I'm going to take a picture of you here. And you'll look just like that, but it'll be you, not me. Yeah? It's like I'm very much involved. I like to be involved. I like people to know I'm there. I'm six foot three. You can't miss me. So instead of me pretending that I'm not there, it's, more, it's better for me to go in and say hello to people, explain to them what I'm doing. Four and eight. Four and a half on eight. Turn to look in here. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Is that okay? சரியா சந்தோஷமா ஆ என்ன ஆ
So she hasn't, have you had, she says she hasn't had a picture taken before like this. No? Okay. I'll do one more and then we're done. Thank you, huh? Nantri. The equipment that I use, that sort of more medium format equipment, s can slow down the process enough to make very thoughtful pictures. I find it just works really well for me. It's a, it's a square-based format um, which is suited to portraiture. Hello, Prasad. <laughs> okay, we're going to swap now, and you're going to come and sit here. Yeah? Don't worry about these guys with the big camera. Using um, a square okay. format, 6x6, six six, it allows me to make you know, emotionally intense pictures because it's very centered in the square. That's it. Come forward, okay. It's perfect. And so just keep looking in there. Keep, no, don't look at me. Look in there. And was that painful? It was painful. <laughs> yeah, that's the sad truth about photography. <laughs> I just like working with natural light. I don't like working with flash units. So here I wanted to make portraits, or control portraits of people with lovely lighting and I found this is a, a local woman's house. We were looking in another room, it was sort of a derelict room nearby, but um, she offered this room and it has perfect light and um, it's just a controlled environment and so all the pictures will look exactly the same in terms of the setup, the lighting will be the same. So who wants to take the picture? It's your turn, isn't it? The way I work, I usually work in, in more difficult circumstances and places. And if you, if you start using flash gear, then your whole setup becomes like a roadshow. It becomes like a TV crew, and that's just too much. It doesn't have a flexibility of working. So it means that I can go to any place in the world or any situation and get in, and, and that's by using natural light. That's it. Well done. Easy. What's your name? Tenjiva. Okay. I can guess at the final result, but you know, to actually, um, I, I, I prefer to actually have the final, the end thing being a bit of a surprise. Like I'll put ingredients in there, but it's almost like the magic is that it makes something maybe, or it doesn't make something that you wish or hope for, you know. And that's the magical process that I like. I don't like having it all worked out. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go. <laughs> wow, she's a really bright character. Huh? How, old, how old are you? Nine years old. Which school do you go to? In the Palatal Padigan Hill. Cat Colum. Cat Colum Mahavidyalaya. Where and where's Cat Colum? Here? It is this place. Okay. Well, what does she like learning most at school? What's her favourite time at school? In the Padigan, in the Padigan, in the Padigan, in the Padigan. Tamil. 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 Okay. Just keep looking here and don't move. For me, it's all about personalization. Try not to blink. It's like I find far too much that, that, that photography nowadays becomes um, depersonalized, aesthetic, um, you know, sort of uh, intellectual. For me, it's all about people. You know, I, I like being with people, and I think that these, these stories and these issues are to do with people. And you need to try and make a, a, a body of work that represents the complexities right. of okay. these people's lives rather than simplify them. So what will come through will just be the personalities. When you put down, you know, if you imagine on the wall, five images, it'll be because all the situation, all the lighting is the same. What will come through is their personalities.
Okay, now, where's the mask? What was interesting is when I went outside, the reason why I picked her was because she had the mask. She was just wondering, she was playing with the mask and she put it up to her face like that and I saw her, so I thought, okay, I'll ask her. Show me. Yeah, that's it. I was interested in the idea of drama, of theatre, of trauma, and how trauma is hidden deep that's within it. people. Okay, that's what we're going to do. I've worked before in areas of conflict, and I can see how deeply traumatised people don't necessarily show their, their, their trauma. It's very, it's very, very deep within. Hey! Thank you. What did you do? Yeah, we did it. And so the mask is a way of giving you one face when really there's another face behind. So I like this sort of exchange. I'm not here to photograph um, events, you know, or, you know, I'm, I'm here more to photograph um, a sort of feeling. And so I was photographing the portraits and then I came across this and I didn't know what it was and I sort of photo and I thought, well, maybe we could link the portraits I've been taking of the kids with these faces. I'm interested in this idea of faces and of trauma and of masks and um, so I think by concentrating on the combination of those things, maybe that I can create a feeling about what, what these people might have been through. And then when I talked to the organiser about the masks, he said, oh, well, you know, this is represents a graveyard. And in fact, each one of these masks represents somebody that died in a tsunami that the children knew. Suddenly the whole idea had a very rounded feeling that I felt was very appropriate. I think a lot of the strategies that I've started to use now are more uh, artistic strategies rather than journalistic strategies. And although whilst my training comes as a journalist and I work in journalistic situations, I'm interested in those more, uh, um, those other things, those universal truths that, that, that's, that's a sort of a link to us all. The facts of who, where, what sometimes disguise or hide us from deeper ways of connecting with a subject. தையல் <laughs> Minsara was the same and trigger. Metal wood to Villa, wood to Maka, wood got to go to them. And when the two one the total one the Larkim, Penum Kuru Kuruvala, and Tolje could be married to Pirimbalum, Aravasa Peru Kurukara Tolil, Payakurukurum, and a total could come a very lamerikin, a big veil of. I think that Sri Lanka is, is moving forwards as it necessarily will, as the people will. The people are not going to sit around and do nothing. They're going to try and get on with their lives and piece things back together again. Also, the tsunami is not the predominant aspect in the minds of the people here. The predominant aspect in the people's minds is to put food on the table for their children, to support their wives, to or wives support their husbands, you know, to, to live. I mean, that doesn't detract from, you know, making a, a piece of work that talks about the daily life here, I suppose, or I suppose is with the fishermen, their relationship to the sea, uh, you know, and that's, um, I think that, that showing that sort of shows that they are moving on, uh, getting on rather, not moving on, getting on, yeah. <laughs>
humans have an a, amazing ability to, to reclaim and get on with stuff. Then that's what we see here. I've been trying to explore, I suppose, how people have been picking up the pieces of their lives and more subtle things like their relationship with the sea. I walk everywhere normally, because I, in the walking, for me it's a process of discovery. A lot of my work is quite metaphorical, and to find those sort of metaphors that for me represent the situation, I need to walk everywhere because I need to discover them. As much as photography is a complex skill, it's also about finding stuff, being in the right situation, and I do that by walking. And also that allows me to walk into a situation where people are. You turn up on foot, they see that, and that always starts a conversation. Hello, you are from? Hello, I'm from me, London. Oh, London. You're fishing? Yes. And I like that interaction. It actually okay? breaks through that yeah. ice yeah, you can straight away. On. No problem. You've satisfied their, their curiosity, and you're, you know, and you've also, you know, started to learn about them, and it allows you just to get on and start working. I mean, it's really obvious. I'm there. I'm a big white guy. I'm in your country, and for me to pretend otherwise is just plain stupid. It's a fairly easy sort of equation. <laughs> I love working with people. I think that I can move into diverse situations as a stranger fairly easily. I spent the last you know, many years doing that. How do I say very good? Yeah. Good English, good. Tamil? Alam. Alam is good. Yeah. What? Very good? Yeah. Very good. Alam. 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 Okay, your, your, your English? Alam. Alam, yeah. And I've told my mother. Yeah. I know about five words of, of every, of about 30 languages. Yes. Alam. Right, how do I say, how do I say goodbye? Yeah, point to water. Huh? Point to water. Or what about, uh, not a goodbye, I'll see you again. Uh, yeah, point to water, tell me. Point to water. Point to water. Point to water. Foy Duarum. Foy Duarum. Okay, because I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk off. Yeah. I can see. So, Foy Duarum. And Nandri. Nandri. Yeah, yeah. Nalam. 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 Coming here for me was really marked by my experiences in Bandarecha. I think it would have been a very different experience if I hadn't been in, in an area that was affected by the tsunami so, so soon afterwards. That was a, a really useful um, thing for knowing what was going to be important to me, what wasn't really important to me. I think that Christian Aid's approach in having local partners it seems sensible. 
only the Sri Lankans are going to solve the problems in Sri Lanka. And on the whole, I think that they seem to be doing a pretty superb job. I'm not sure what people will see necessarily in my pictures. We all know there has been a lot of news coverage of the tsunami event, and I am purposely I didn't want to make another piece of journalistic content. I'm looking to create something that is works on a more imaginative level. <laughs>